When I give presentations of electromagnetics or electromagnetic devices, I love to show off these sort of 3D rendered visualizations. And I can do a pretty good job of making these look good with a white background. Sometimes I need to do that. Maybe I want to put something in paper or a publication. But in a presentation, I think we can do better. I think these look much better with a black background and we can give the field some emission. We can even make the devices kind of glowy and look cool. So I think this looks really good, but we can do even better. I don't necessarily always like this flat, boring black background, particularly if this is going to be up on the screen for a while. Instead, what if we gave the background these cool stars and maybe even some nebula? And here we're even showing a very slow rotation to help the viewer interpret the three-dimensionality of this. Anyway, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do that star nebula background. In other tutorials, I can show you about the waves and how to do other effects. So this is just the stars and nebula. Here we are in Blender, and I am using version 3.6.1, although I'm not doing anything fancy enough that earlier versions and hopefully later versions, everything won't apply. So let's get started by looking at some preliminary, preliminary settings that I think are rather important. And we're going to go over here to the render settings. There's a picture of a back of a DSLR camera. And the first thing we want to do is make sure the render engine is on EV. Cycles is also possible, but sometimes the settings are just a little bit different for cycles. So if you want your results to match mine, stick with EV. Now, many people by default will check ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. I can tell you they won't make much of a difference for this tutorial, but we'll go ahead and check them. We definitely want to check the bloom effect because we might want to make the stars glow a little bit. Now, the most important one under film, we want to make sure that this transparent box is not checked. I very often do check this in some of my tutorials to do things like give it a perfect white background, but we don't want this checked right now because we want to give it a star background. So we actually want the background and we we're going to make it look like stars. So with that said, we're actually ready to go in and start working on the stars. So. What I like to do is go up here to the left until the cursor changes to that little crosshair and then drag that to the left, eh, somewhere around here, just enough in the 3D viewport that we can look at the stars and stuff that will eventually appear out here. Over on the left is where we wanna work on the nodes for the stars. Well, right now, all we did was duplicate our 3D viewport. So we don't want the 3D, 3D viewport, we want the shader editor. And by default, we're looking at a shader editor to look at the, the nodes for an object. In this case, it's probably the square. While we don't want to edit the shader for the square, what we would like to do is edit the world. So in this drop down menu where it says object, I'm going to go to world. Now we're looking at the shader for the world. And if we look at that, we're giving our world just sort of this dark gray background. Now, if you have Node Wrangler enabled in your, your add-ons, you can highlight this background and just simply press Control T. And these other three nodes pop up, your texture coordinates, so that's your sense of X, Y, and Z. Then your mapping node that lets you transform the coordinates so we can scale, we can rotate, we can translate. So by default, I always bring these two things in. The next is this environment texture. We don't need this, but this gives you the option if you want to wrap a picture around the whole outside. We don't want to do that. We want to make stars. So let's go ahead and just delete that. So the mapping node is generating our coordinates. From this, we want to create some kind of pattern that we can turn into stars. And so I like to use the Voronoi texture for that. So up here under the add menu, I'll click on the search and type in V-O-R-O, and up pops this Voronoi texture. So I can drop that in right after the mapping texture. The vector output of mapping, I'm going to connect to the vector input of the Voronoi texture. That lets the coordinates we generate drive this Voronoi tessellation. 
So what is this Voronoi tessellation doing? For right now, temporary, let's drag the color output over to the color input. And if we wait a second for things to update, what we'll see on the right, and we don't see it because we're not in render view, and we want to click on this very last bubble here. That's the, the render view. And now if we rotate, we can see what that has done. The world, so off at infinity, what we see is a Voronoi tessellation where all these little regions are given a different color. Well, we clearly don't want that. We want something that we can convert to stars. So instead of the color, if we drag distance over to color, now we can start to see something happening. Uh, and the color is essentially conveying distance from the edge of the, the Voronoi edges. So this is what we can start to turn into stars. They kind of already look like stars, yeah, but they're too blurred and too big. And so we wanna work on their contrast. We can play with the contrast using the color ramp node. So we'll go over to add and search, type in color, and there's this color ramp option. And we'll drop that right between these two nodes. Now, what comes out of Voronoi texture, this distance function? Think of this as just numbers between zero and one. A one ends up being white over here and a zero means black. This color ramp node will convert zero to this first color, black, and one to this white color. So, well, that's what it was doing by default. So we actually haven't done anything. However, we have these sliders where we can start playing with the contrast here. And look at what we've done. We've created a way to make black circles. However, this is the opposite of what we wanna do. We wanna have most everything be black and have little white circles. Easiest way to do that is just to swap these two, drag the white to the left and the the black to the right. Now we can see we have control. This black side will make our stars bigger or smaller. And this white slider, as we approach the black, will make them brighter or more blurred. Now, I don't like my stars to be white. I'll click on this little white and I have ability to change the color. I'll come over and make them just a little bit blue because to me, when I look up, stars seem a little bit blue. Now the scale. If we drag this up, we can see we get many, many, many more stars. So I might crank this up to something like 100. And right now this looks almost ridiculous. And we can fix that with these sliders here. So I can make the stars smaller and something like that I think looks pretty good. I can work on that a little bit more. All right, now this background node will control the brightness of these stars. Right now, they're just set to a default one, which is actually pretty close to where we want it. But just to show you something, let's type in 1000 here. See how the stars now glow? That's actually the bloom effect over here. If I unchecked that, we wouldn't get that nice glow. But we want our stars to glow a little bit, so we can play around with this number to add or subtract however much glow we need. If I type in a number like 10, I get a much weaker bloom effect. Let's keep it set to one right now. All right, I'm gonna drag this texture coordinate over to the left. I am going to highlight these four nodes and then press Control J. That groups these and puts this little box around it. Now, if I click on the box over here, I can give that box a label and I will call this something like small stars. And I'll remember, there's all my settings for small stars. So I can drag this up a little bit. Now what I'll do is I will select that whole thing and hit Shift D, which duplicates and drop it down right there below. So I will click on this and instead of small stars, I could make this big stars or maybe even let's add some planets. Let's make this planets because I'm pretty happy with the stars. Now, planets, to me, when I'm looking up at them, uh, they look a little reddish. And notice when I'm playing with this, I can't see any effect over here because it's not hooked up to anything. So I'm going to move my, give my coordinates into this mapping node. Now, over on the right, I would like to see my stars and planets. So I'm going to add, I'll type in shader, 
and I see a mix shader, add shader. We'll be using mix shader a little bit later, but right now I want to add shader because that's going to add my planets and stars together. So I add those two together, and if I want to see it, I'll drag this over to the, the output. Now, I, I drug my sliders here, and essentially I still have my small stars. And I drug this over because I just want to change the color a little bit. Planets look reddish to me, so yeah, I don't like that color red. Um, maybe yeah, somewhere around there. Now, there's a lot fewer planets, so I don't want my scale set to 100. I might bring this down to something like 20. And in my opinion, those are too big. So I will decrease the size of those. I don't want to pass my orange tab. So if I want to try to get them smaller, I can drag this orange tab to the left. And... Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And these are going to be brighter. So I might type in a five. Let's try typing in a 50. There's a bit of a bloom effect. Maybe too bright. 25. Anyway, you get the idea. You can play with that. Uh, I'll bring it down to 10 for now. So over in our viewport, we now see that we have planets, we have stars, and you can play around with all these settings to give yourself more stars, less stars, colors, more or less planets. Let's move on to the nebula. So I'm going to want a mapping node. If I just duplicate this one, it's going to duplicate it inside of this box. So I'll just type in mapping node and give myself a new one. Now for nebula, they're, they're clouds. And so for that, I like to use a noise texture instead of the Voronoi texture. So we'll type in noise and drop that down here. Now we would like to see what we're doing. So what I'll do is I'll drag the world output down here. I'll drag the factor output over to surface. So we're no longer going to see our stars. I need to drag the vector output into my vector input. And on my texture coordinate, I need my coordinates. So I'll drag over from generated to the vector input of the mapping node. And if I wait a little bit, I can see on the right what it is I have. So those look like clouds, but Ah, that's not really nebula, and it's completely hiding the stars. So again, we need to adjust contrast, so we'll drop the color ramp node in there. So search for the color ramp node. We'll drop that in and play around with this until we get things that look like pretty nice clouds. And the scale, I might want to drop down to... Let's try 2.6. And just keep playing with the sliders until you get something you like. And if those look too cartoony, we can do things like crank up detail. Um, add a little bit of roughness and the distortion gives a little bit of swirl and I, I like a little bit of swirl because it makes it look like the clouds have been moving around or something and not clouds nebula <laughs> okay well those look pretty good and we'd like to bring the stars back we would also like to give that some color so color let me just duplicate these three nodes and we'll do everything exactly over again but instead of clouds now we're picking out color and can pick any two types of colors that we want. I'll make these a little bit more symmetric. Uh, let's pick something a little on the red side. So maybe something like that and something a little on the, the light blue side, maybe somewhere around there. Okay. So the output of this top color is whether there's clouds or not, or how intense the cloud is. At the output of this color ramp is the color of the cloud. We really would like to multiply these together, but colors have three numbers, an RGB, a red, a green, a blue. So they're actually vectors. So we need to do some vector math here. 
And if I type in vector, I get a vector math node. And not add, multiply. I'm going to drag the color into the first input, color from the bottom one into the second input. And now I can look at their product. And what we should see is some colored nebula. And we can play around with this a little bit, like the red's not really coming out. So I could, I could drag this red slider over a little bit. The, the red seems to come out a bit more. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. Uh, I think I'm gonna bring the scale down to something more like one. That way the scale doesn't exactly match the nebula. Maybe that's too much red. Uh, I, I tend, to, when these are roughly symmetric, about 0 0.5, it tends to look, look best in my opinion. Okay, so we now have our nebula. We would like to bring the stars back. Now, we don't just wanna add shaders and I'll show you why. Let's go ahead and add them. And then we're gonna wait a few moments for the, the view to update. And you'll see the fundamental problem. The fundamental problem is that we're seeing stars through the nebula and the nebula should really get a little bit more opaque in the middle. It only looks a little bit more opaque because you have two things going on, but you're always seeing the stars even through the thickest nebula. And that's the problem with add shaders is just blindly adding. And really what we need to be doing is mixing the shaders and we can mix them in proportion to the strength of the cloud. So let's delete that add shader node. And let's do one thing. I wanna also be able to control the intensity of the nebula. So I want one of these backgrounds to follow the output of my nebula. So let's search for background, which lets me control the, the brightness or intensity of it. All right, now let's add the mix shader. So instead of uh, add shader, it's mix shader. So it'll mix these two in proportion to whatever this factor setting is. So we'll bring in the stars, we'll bring in the nebula, and we wanna control these in proportion to the intensity of the nebula and the output of this top color ramp was the intensity of the nebula. So I will drag color over to factor. And of course we're not seeing anything yet because we don't have anything hooked up to our world. So now I will connect the output of that mix shader to the input of the world. And this should look very nice. And we can work on this and test if it's working by having our nebula be thicker than we'd like them, but see how it hides the stars behind them. And, and I think that looks, looks pretty good. I'm thinking maybe there's not enough nebula. And so I can drag my, my sliders around. Remember this top one is controlling the nebula. This bottom one is only the colors of the nebula. Okay, so that's really it. If we were to render now, we would see our square and we would see the nebula and the stars. And that's really all there is to it. I think this is a wonderful way to show off waves. A word of caution. It's going to be very easy to love your stars and nebula so much that they become a very dominant part of the screen. So if I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the stars and nebula because in a way they're more beautiful than the device and the waves. And I think this is a mistake, particularly if you're giving a presentation about that object or that, that wave going around the object. So don't let your, your ego or interest in the stars and nebula lead you down this path. Instead, I think it's gonna be very good practice to suppress that background. So the stars and the nebula aren't the dominant thing on the screen. Instead, it's the waves and the device, but the stars and nebula is there just to get rid of that flat back background, give it a little bit of interest.